Michigan State was able to make it back to the Final Four this year. Any chance they can make it back for a third straight year next season? Hey, how are you folks? Jason Harwood's glad to be with you as we continue Destination Indianapolis presented by the all-new Infinity MCBS Sports.com's Gary Paris, CBS College Sports, and Steve Lapis. And, you know, the championship game will be played tonight. But let's look ahead to next year. And, Steve, let's start with this basis of the fact that the teams that made it to this year's Final Four, when you look at Butler, obviously it'll depend on what happens with Gordon Hayward and whether he goes pro or not. And you look at Michigan State, they bring almost everybody back next season. Well, they certainly will be two of the teams in the top five in the preseason if, in fact, those guys all do come back. When you get this far and, do, and have that kind of returning team, you're going to be that good. And the experience that you get by doing this, playing all those extra games and know what it's like to play with the big heat on, is only going to make these teams better. Butler becomes a preseason top five. Well, this year they were 11. It's not like they were bad, but they will be a legitimate team for the national championship. Gary, what about the other two teams that were in the Final Four, West Virginia and Duke, where people should expect them to be next year? Well, they obviously lose Deshaun Butler. You're probably going to lose Devin E. Banks. Um, th there's a transition, I think, for West Virginia. Uh, with Duke, um, they're going to obviously lose John Shire, Lance Thomas, Brian Zubek, could lose Kyle Singler. I think most believe he'll be gone as well. It's very hard to project at this point, but I think we can we can put a bunch of teams in a group, and when you start grouping at the top, it's it's Purdue, it's Duke, it's Butler, it's Pittsburgh, it's Michigan State, a lot of the familiar faces. You know, it's funny. It's funny you say it's, it's hard to predict, but this is one of the things you're going to do as soon as the championship game is over is you're going to come up with your next year's a, a Parish is top 25-1, and one, and it's only April. Uh, one of the teams you didn't mention, you didn't mention Kentucky. Well, right now, I mean, they're, they're, <laughs> their roster is in such a flux. You don't know which way it's going. I will promise you this. He'll have players. He always gets players. But who they're going to be, you know, it looks like right now they're going to lose five underclassmen. Patrick Patterson, DeMarcus Cousins, John Wall, Daniel Orton, and Eric Bledsoe. Darnell Dotson could also be on the way out. Still, probably going to get Brandon Knight. Probably going to get C.J. Leslie. We'll probably get another top 20 type recruit. You put him beside De Darius Miller, DeAndre Liggins. John Calipari has never had a problem with ending up. By the time the season starts, he'll have pros on his roster. You know, Steve, a, a team that Gary did mention and looked for next year is North Carolina. Of course, a disappointing season this year. Made it to the NIT championship, and so often we talk about teams that make it that far. Look at Baylor this year, made it to the finals last year, almost made the final four. Is North Carolina a team, despite some of the guys they're going to lose, that you're going to expect to be a great competitor to be at the final four in Houston? I think Roy Williams will be back in a big way. This Harrison Barnes is some tremendous player player that he landed. I think Dexter Strickland is going to be a very good point guard. They have Drew back, so their guard play will be much better next year. This year, that's what killed them. The guard play was not very good. Strickland a little young. Drew was kind of inexperienced, even though he played last year some. So I think this North Carolina team will be back. You know, and one thing too, Gary, you know, we, we talk about Butler being here in the championship game, and obviously you talk about Butler being a preseason top five if, if Gordon Hayward doesn't go pro. Maybe even if he does, they'll be, still be in the preseason top ten. What about some other teams that that could be like Butler. Obviously, Gonzaga will be up there depending on what they lose, and, and, and Memphis could be back next year. But what about some other teams that are not in the BCS conference? Well, El Elias Harris has already uh, announced that he's coming back to school, so that's a big plus for Gonzaga. Memphis is, I think, another one that's going to bounce back pretty quickly. Josh Pastner went and signed the number one recruiting class in the country. Probably lose Elliott Williams, but uh, bring back Wesley Witherspoon. Bring back Will Coleman. Bring into that a uh, couple of McDonald's All-Americans in Joe Jackson and Jalon Kendrick. Another kid who would have been a McDonald's All-American in Will Barton, except he's a fifth-year player. Suddenly, Memphis has the type of Memphis teams you've been used to watching. And one thing we can guarantee for next season, it'll be a fantastic season again, as it always is with college basketball. Folks, that'll do it for Destination Indianapolis, presented by the all-new Infinity M. We've had a lot of fun here outside Lucas Oil Stadium, of course, inside the arena as well. Of course, the championship game tonight on CBS and, of course, on March Madness on demand as well. Don't forget to go to cbssports.com slash memorabilia and your chance for the Inspired Coaches sweepstakes and get an autographed basketball by all four Inspired Coaches. For Gary Parrish, Steve Lapis, and everybody else that's joined us here in Indianapolis all throughout the weekend, I'm Jason Horowitz. Take care, folks. Thanks. <laughs>